Folks, it's Fernando doing our video for the Modern Survivalist and today I'm going to be showing you guys the RZ Industries M5 Emergency Filtration Mask which is this mask that I have here. This is exactly as I got it in the mail. Uh, about a month ago I got an email from Josh over at, over at uh, RZ Industries asking if I'd like to check these out, try it and share it with you folks. Usually I get emails from companies asking if I would like to review a product and such in general, the answer is no, because I don't feel uh, that interested in, in it, or I don't think that you guys will benefit from it. Uh, not the case here. I said, yeah, sure, send me one, because I'd really like to check it out. Uh, I have been recommending having some kind of respirator or, or face mask uh, in your kit uh, for, for a good time now. Uh, I think it's one of those critical parts of your kit that is very often overlooked. You know, the rule of three that says that you cannot live three minutes without air, three uh, hours of exposure, three days without water, three weeks without food. Very often people focus on some of those other but forget about those three minutes without air because you, you think, how is it that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be preparing for air? Air is all around us. It's not something that I should be concerned in. Well, yeah, the thing is that air can be affected by a number of things. It can be anything from uh, smoke because of, of, a, of a fire, wildfire, house fire. It can be during your daily routine, maybe a, um, an earthquake collapse structures, smoke uh, because of debris, uh, dust in the air. We saw this in 9-11. I have covered it in Actually, I have a video that says the importance of, of air, and there I, I go a little bit more into detail. Uh, and then you have uh, airborne diseases as well, or you have uh, diseases that spread through through air, which are yet another entire world that you should be uh, uh, thinking about when preparing. So basically, yes, I do think that this is the kind of thing that you should have. Usually, I, re I, I have been recommending the 3M, uh, 3M uh, respirators, the collapsible ones, because they're nice and flat. Uh, this is a little bit larger. I actually have one here. It's, you know, this is usually, I bought a bunch of these and keep uh, a few of them over in my kits. Uh, and, and they're okay. This is definitely something uh, a little bit more durable and specifically intended for that kind of purpose, you know, uh, emergency filtration mask. So it's going to be a little bit more durable. Let's go right ahead. I want to do this in front of the camera so as to get my, my first impressions. Let's suppose this is what I keep in my kit. Uh, I open it because I'm suddenly needing it. It's right, I pull it open. And well, the first thing that I notice and that I actually do like is that this is a, a Ziploc a type bag, meaning I can actually open it so as to show it to you folks and then seal it again so as to keep it in my kit without getting anything in it. So that already is something that I'm liking at it again. And here you have um, a, a Mylar type uh, bag, you know, that metallic construction. So it's definitely something more durable than your disposable bag. And here you have the mask itself. Let's check first what we what it says here on the outside. Here it says mesh construction, active carbon filter, adjustable nose piece. Right over there, and here it says filtration replacement instructions. Unscrew both in exhalation valves from the inside the mask. Remove all filter and position new filter in its place. Screw both exhalation valves back in place to secure filter. Check the vents for a solid seal with the mask and filter. Right, so basically those are the instructions for replacing the filters in the mask. But let's see what we have here inside our bag, what we got. We have the mask itself and we have what seems to be a carry bag. Okay, that's even better because I'm not, now I'm not going to be using this, probably I'm going to be using this in my, in my kit, alright, in this nice, actually quite nice bag for keeping my, my respirator. I was talking with Josh, well actually this was all through email, but I was telling him that the bomb would be to have something like this with some sort of eye protection, something that covers your eyes as well. That would be something that would honestly go, go nuts over. That's something that I really would like to have. Now here you have the mask itself, all right, and with this velcro strap, so my first time using it I see the nose piece there would be going like this and going for something like like that okay that's that's actually quite 
simple, straightforward. I, I have a little mirror here on the side. So you adjust the nose piece. Okay, this is nice. A, a few things. I like the, yeah, I'm gonna be taking it off. So I have here a mirror on the side, so I was checking that out. A few things that I, of course, like. It's it's clearly a more durable material. That's, you know, this mesh is definitely something tougher. So you have the Evolve, which uh, it really eases uh, respiration. That's one of the things that I liked in the 3M one. Now, of course, uh, two different worlds, but uh, the Evolve makes, makes a difference. Sometimes, and you see this uh, when there's disasters, when there's uh, spread, uh, disease uh, spreading, and you see folks with, with those cup style respirators. The thing is, if you use one of those, and I actually use um, a respirator for, for a time uh, in, in Buenos Aires when, when there was um, the swine flu uh, problem, right? Uh, I I use it for for some time, and the thing is that going up uh, up and down stairs and such with a non-valve respirator, it really uh, affects your breathing, and you get tired much faster. It's it, it's um it's completely different. If you have something with a valve, that that really does does help quite a bit. Okay. So the material is definitely something more more durable than than what you have with something like this. Also, something else to keep in mind is that let's suppose you have a, a, you know swine flu, a, a Ebola, or whatever it is out there. There's a, a certain airborne disease out there that you feel a little bit self-conscious about using something like this, which is clearly simply a, um, a respirator, right? It's, it's quite obvious what it is. This being black and, and this kind of a, a format, it does hide it quite well. It, it would seem like something that you would be using in a, in a winter sport. It would be something that is far less um, eye-catching than wearing something like this. So uh, I'll say it right away. Yes, this is something that I'm gonna be replacing uh, in my at least in my EDC bag. Instead of having something like this, I, I'm gonna be keeping this one there, and maybe see if about getting a, a couple more for some of the other kits that I have. But that alone makes quite a bit of a difference. You know, it's it's more durable. Um, it's still a um, you know it's. A, I don't have it here in terms of, I was reading that in the website, it's a 99% a a a filtration in terms of, of filtering 99.95% of the particles in the air, which is pretty much up there with the FFP3 a collapsible one. So it's about in that category. It's not a... Um, an NBC respirator like the ones that you have for you know nuclear biological and chemical warfare that has a 100% um, and, you know there's no intake you have some uh, a little bit of of air probably sipping on the sides it's actually quite decent you know, keeping keeping it in perspective, I'd say about uh, te less than two percent uh, of of air intake is sipping on the sides, maybe. So yeah, sure. If if there's a, uh, a, a radioactive warfare going on, this is maybe not what you're going to be using. But for the kind of thing that you want in terms of, of disaster preparedness, thinking of dust, debris in the air, smoke, thinking of a, of a, of a flu, trying to avoid that kind of stuff. This is something that you know makes, at least for me, does make a lot of sense. And you have one filter already in place. Yeah, I haven't shown that on the inside, right? This is how it looks on the inside. And you have these two valves, which, as I was reading in the description, the, these would be the ones that you unscrew so as to place the replaceable filter once this one has gathered enough dust and such. And this is how you, you fix it 
on the back of the head with a velcro so yeah and it's elastic as well so you have a good pull there in your face right ah I really like it yeah that's that's basically it it's a, a simple concept again the thing that as I told uh, Josh the thing that I would really love would have something like this something that goes flat like this but has at least some sort of eye protection it's a a huge design cha uh, challenge it, it's you know if it were if it was easy someone would have come up with it already but something that falls like this flat and has some sort of eye protection as well you know it's very very hard to achieve that's probably why I haven't seen one yet you know maybe it's not it's not possible but some form of eye protection that would be uh, outstanding but uh, on the meantime yes this is something that I I see makes a lot of sense and you would have your your uh, respirator you would have a, um, a valve respirator with two valves there and something that at the same time is a lot more durable you have replacements uh, here as well and it's not as it's it's a more gray man approach than actually going with a with with a white one like this and looking as if you just escaped the the zombie infected <laughs> section of town right guys that's gonna be all for now yeah definitely liking it and looking forward to more products by RZ Industries guys it's gonna be all for now take care uh, see you on our next video I'm gonna be leaving the links below in case you're interested